Equinox, a Reine Knizia reprint of a reprint. That's the reason I got it. I love Reine Knizia. He's a genius, so I was very excited to pick up this game and tell you all about it. Is this the second time I've had to film this video? Yes. The reason for that is, is that Equinox is a simple game. Wouldn't you know how it works? It is a very difficult game to explain to other people. I want to do this for you in the video in a very short quick succinct way so that you understand the game but i found myself in the last time i was trying to explain this game just going on and on and on about how the game works and it's not a difficult game it's just different which is a good thing in this game animals are battling to death <laughs> in the forest that's the theme, they are battling animals, they're battling to the death, and only three out of the eight animals that start the battle will become legendary by the end of round five and score anyone any points. What you're doing in the game is betting on these animals. There's eight animals, you can over the, and five rounds. Over the course of the game, you can make five bets. The earlier you bet on something, the more points it's going to be worth. If you bet on it as a secret in round one, then you get five points for it. If you bet on it in round one just in general, you get four. And then it carries on getting lower and lower until in the last round, you can bet on something, but it's not going to be worth any points. You don't want to do that. You want to make your bets early, but also you don't want everyone else to know really what you're going for, because this is a battle. A lot of you are going to be going for the same thing because at the end of the game, only three of those animals are going to score. So you've got to go for the same thing at some point. So whereas you would be thinking that this is a game of betting and trying to outsmart everyone and outwit people at the table, really it's a game of table talk and collaboration and saying, oh, don't worry about me here. I was fine. I'm just doing this. Just, oh, but this person's going to get loads of points. You've really got to, I think, ramp up some table talk in this game and for that reason i think this game works probably better at a higher player count than it does at a lower player count it does certainly work at two players there is a lot more chaos and fighting and un you know that kind of thing that happens where you you'd screw someone over so bad but you didn't even mean to do it <laughs> that can happen but it does work at all different player counts I'll say now that the production of this game is lovely. The pebbles are nice. The bags that the pebbles come with are completely superfluous. They are good for storage. And the artwork on the cards is absolutely wonderful. The fact that it comes in a purple version and a green version and there's no difference between the versions is confusing and unnecessary, I think. But that's, that's that. That's marketing. So there are two versions of it. They are, from what I understand, both the same. The game takes up a massive footprint because I think you can have like 54 tarot sized cards sp spread out on a table in front of you by the end of the game. So that's something to bear in mind. So you're betting on these things. Let's get back to the rules. So you're betting on these animals and I'll call the animals suits. The way you do this, you've got a hand of cards and on your turn you can make a bet and then you can play a card. And then you're going to be drawing back up and stuff to your hand of eight cards and all that kind of thing. So you're putting a card down of, and they're all a value, and you're putting it in front of the animal, the suit, that uh, its corresponding column. Each animal has its own column, which you'll set out at the start of the game. The round ends when all the animals have got a card associated to them in that round. So when eight cards have been played in round one, the round will end if there is a definitive loser. Because the player, the animal, sorry, that has the lowest value at the end of the round is going to be out so say there's like an eight a five a three an eight a five a four and a zero is that eight or that seven who cares but the lowest value is going to be out of that round so you're going to hope that you didn't bet on that animal and you might have because you played a seven of the bat for instance and that was a great card you've bid on that thing you think oh, i'm gonna win points i've made a secret bet on this bat i bet here on this bat it's gonna be great and then someone plays a zero over that seven that you played because it's the top card in the pile not the cumulative value of those piles it's the top card showing at the end of the round when all eight have been filled so you're really trying this is a very highly player interactive game you're trying to screw over people you're trying to get animals out that people have bet on it's cutthroat and it's wonderfully devious. 
The other thing here is that each animal, each suit, has a special power. And they aren't massively game-breaking powers, but they are very, very useful powers. Things like taking cards off someone, drawing more cards, moving bets around, moving, taking cards back, taking cards from discard piles, loads of special abilities. And you get to use those special abilities if you have the most value of bets in that animal. You kind of have the most influence over that suit. So you want to have value in the really cool special abilities. So it kind of also gives players things that they're kind of going for as well because you go oh that's a really good power so i'm not only going to go for that animal to win i'm going to want the majority in that animal straight away so i can keep on reusing that special ability there's other things like in this game there's these trees that do a few extra there's a few extra cards that do a few extra things and they're fun these uh, help you get cards out of discard piles and all that kind of stuff and there's chameleons now chameleons can be played in any role because they're chameleons they can get away with it obviously but it means that you don't, the person that plays over that chameleon again, so say someone has this really cool special ability, you play a chameleon into that row on that round, then the next person who wants to use that special ability again plays on top of that chameleon, but that means they don't get the special ability again. So it's a kind of a way to kind of curtail someone spamming a really good power that's doing them really well, play a chameleon on it, so it kind of like curtails their ability to do that. So at the end of a round, there's going to be a loser. The round only ends if there is a definitive loser. Some One of the animals has to have the lowest number. That's going to get knocked out. Then you move on to the next round. You make your bets. You place the cards down. You do as much finagling as you can. And by the end of the game, there's going to only be three animals left. So you really, when you're scoring, you could ignore most of the board because you're only looking at those three columns and the bets that have been made on those animals. You're going to reveal any secret bets that you made, but they may also get revealed during the game because your secret bets don't count towards the majority. So you can't use their special power, but you might think, oh, I better show this so I can start using this secret power. And uh, you look at the, you just look at how many stones you've got, times the stones by the round number, essentially, because that's how you get points. And the most point is the winner. Do you understand how to play this game? I don't know that this explanation will really give you a fundamental understanding of how this game works. There's something a bit quirky, a bit weird about this, but the rule book is here. It's absolutely great. It's fine. It's not long. The rule book is only a few pages long. There's loads of uh, massive examples of stuff, big pictures. You just read the rule book and you will have an understanding of this game. Try and watch a gameplay online. Try and see someone playing the game. Not a rules video. Try and see someone playing the game online. It'll really help you out. And also there's a, a, a big description of how all the cards work on the back of here, which is very useful. But this is a really fun, highly player interactive betting bidding game where you are going to be angry at your opponents, fighting tooth and nail. You're really going to, some, someone might know that they can't win, but you can also completely try and dick over the person who made you lose. It's fun. It's family fun. It's beautiful. There's a reason this game's been around for so long and keeps on coming back in different iterations. That's because it's a really good game and it's pretty unique. There are some other games that have similar things, Cheaty Mages and a few other games like that. But for a bidding arena battle kind of game with lots of special powers, and once you know how you're doing it, turns fly by pretty quickly. I do love Rana Kanitsia games. That might be my bias. I can admit that. But uh, give this one a shot. I think it's pretty good value for money. Highly replayable, I think. So that's a good thing. And uh, it looks nice. Equinox. There you go. Thanks, everyone.